Okay, today in this video I'm going to be talking about how to configure SIP and SCCP IP phones. And I am your host, CCMP Seth, so let's get into it. Uh, this is what the topology is going to look like. I have my 3825 CME router. It's connecting to a 3750 switch, which is giving power to my two phones that I have here. Actually, I have more phones hooked up, but I only have these three models here. I have the 9971, which is going to be using the SIP protocol, the session initiation protocol. And then the other Cisco phone that I have is the 7970, which is going to be using the skinny protocol. I also have a 7921 wireless phone, and uh, my CME router is doubling up as a wireless LAN controller. So I got wireless going on. So I got a pretty cool uh, VoIP home lab network. Uh, I love this stuff, so I wanted to share my information with you. So wh what's going to happen is I'm going to show you the configs on what you need to do for the 9971. 9971 can only run the SIP protocol, and then it's going to contact uh, another phone that is running the skinny protocol. Uh, basically, these two protocols are just signaling protocols. Okay, so when you pick up the phone, you get a dial tone. It's creating a SIP connection to the CME router. Uh, once it contacts and tries to signal to another device, it has to go through the CME router itself. So it doesn't matter what protocol the other side is using, it's still going to work. Then when you make uh, the actual connection to the other side, uh, let's say the 9971 calls the 7970 phone, picks it up. Once the two make that connection, then they will establish a real-time transport protocol connection. Okay. Then the CME can go away and it no longer needs to be there during the conversation. Okay. Uh, and the 7921, the wireless phone that I have here, it's also going to be running the SCCP protocol. So let's get into it and configure this, or I'll show you the configurations on, on what needs to be done. Uh, I'm going to take you through my uh, personal router. So let's, uh, let's do this. So the first thing you need to do is you need to load the flash files or I'm sorry the firmware files for your phones okay you can find them on the internet you can uh, download them from Cisco's website if you have the if you have a login but when you download them they're gonna show up as a tar file a majority of the time it'll be a tar file and then all you do is you extract it to a certain directory in your flash and then you get all of these firmware files okay right here all these firmware files are for your phone for that particular uh, model. So this is the 7970. If I were to untar it, then I would get these two, four, five, six files, including the loads file. Um, I think it also includes these as well. But the way that you untar it or unzip it or whatever, you would say archive and then question mark your way out. So I want to archive a tar file and I would like to extract it and then it'll say okay what is the file name this is where you point to where it's at and then whoa right click that and then hit question mark it'll say okay where do you want to uh, unzip it or untar it uh, you put it to wherever you want to you hit flash you hit enter and then it'll extract those files uh, I'm not gonna do that because I already clearly did it and it is up here Okay, uh, you do this for all your phones. You can see that I did it for, let's see, that one was for the 7970. If I were to do a dir flash pipe include uh, tar files. Here is the tar file for my 7921G. I also have a, there's for a 7940. And I should have some 9971 files as well. Let me do a dir flash. Include 9971. Oh, I extracted these files into a directory on the flash. There you go. And these are my files for uh, my 9971. Now that I have that on my flash, what do I do with it? Well, 
I need to tell uh, the telephony service, the SCCP protocol configuration, and the SIP protocol configuration to uh, load this file when a phone boots up via TFTP. Okay, so if I were to do a show run pipe include telephony service, not include section. Okay, uh, don't worry about these passwords. This is just for a lab environment, and I'm going to change them anyways. But uh, you could see here, whenever so a phone is trying to configure itself, what firmware should it use? we are telling the SCCP protocol via the telephony service configuration whenever a 7970 contacts you give them this file it is a loads file it is at SCCP 70.9 you know loads file it's gonna look something like this you don't have to include the dot loads um, sometimes you can like how I did here but you don't have to so you can see uh, anytime a 7970 comes online it's going to load that file uh, 7921 that's my wireless phone it's gonna load that file and then it's going to upgrade its firmware to whatever you want it to okay but now that I have that and I tell my CME router hey use these files I need to enable my CME router to be a TFTP server so if I do a show run include TFTP here is where it could get kind of uh, uh, monotonous, I guess, because you have to say TFTP server for every single file that your phones need to grab, whether it be uh, a picture, um, background pictures, or it could be a, uh, a ringtone, doesn't matter. You have to say TFTP and then where is that file located. So you can see here, all my 7921 files, I have to say TFTP. All my 9971 files, I have to say TFTP space uh, TFTP server space flash, and so on and so forth. Okay, so you have to make sure you do that for all the files. Um, if I were to do a dir, and then I do this, I have to say TFTP, and the easiest way to do this is actually. If you hit Alt and then you highlight all of these, you can copy it, paste it in Notepad, and then put uh, TFTP server, flash, and then you know the directory all in front of it. Make sure it looks right. Copy paste it back into the, the config, uh, into the command line, and it'll be easy so you don't have to fat finger it and uh, possibly misconfigure your, um, your TFTP server line. Okay, uh, I'm using my 3825 as a TFTP server. You can have the TFTP server somewhere else, but I have a, a pretty big flash drive, so I'm putting everything on my flash drive itself. Uh, okay, so now that I loaded the files, now I need to configure my phones. Uh, the way that you configure your phones, uh, if you're running the SCCP protocol, uh, the Cisco proprietary one, then everything is going to start with ePhone, okay? And what this ePhone is, an ePhone is a physical phone, okay? So I want to say, okay, the physical phone one, who are you? Uh, it's going to be based on your MAC address, okay? You could even say what type that phone is and what buttons it's going to get, okay? So where is my 7970? Here we go. So I said ePhone 3, based on your MAC address, you are a 7970, and these are the phone numbers you're going to get. So this says button 1, you're going to get directory number 1. Button 2, you're going to get directory number 3. Button 3, you're going to get directory number 30. What are those directory numbers? Well, that's a good question, and it is up here. Okay, so you can see here, directory number 1 that is the number 1001 you get the extension 1001 you also get uh, if if a phone has a directory number of 2 then they are going to get the number of 1002 you could even give it a name if you want to so when you call it that's what it's going to be okay then when the phone boots up it's going to grab this specific configuration and then it should be good to go okay 
Uh, CIPC is Cisco IP Communicator. That is the uh, soft phone that you could load on your computer where you don't need a physical phone. Uh, okay, so that takes care of that. Um, you could see my 7970 configs, that is ePhone 3, and then my 7921, my wireless phone, it is ePhone 6, okay? And that's based on that MAC address. And again, it's going through my wireless controller through wireless, so that's pretty cool. Um, okay, now let's look at the 9970 phones. Let's do a show run section voice. This is where you have the SIP protocol and the equivalent of the telephony service. So the equivalent of the telephony service configuration, it's going to start with voice register global. Okay. Pretty much it, it's, it's very similar to the SCCP configuration. You can see I still have the load command. I say load anytime a 9971 phone uh, contacts the call manager it's going to download this firmware load file okay uh, because this 9971 has a camera and it supports video I have to enable it right there then for the directory numbers and the phone configuration it's going to be a voice register DN number so you would say voice register DN1 which is equivalent to ePhone DN1 What's the number? You can give it a name. You could also give it a label as it is put on the phone. And then you configure the physical phone. The physical phone is voice register pool 1. Instead of the MAC address, it says ID MAC. Then you put in the MAC address, what type it is, what is the what number. So number 1 is the button, and then the directory number is the actual phone number itself and then tell it to enable video so this phone can have video services um, and then you do this for every single phone that you have and you continue to do this uh, I mean once you get your first phone and you understand the load process uh, the firmware upgrade the TFTP service adding new phones and different types of phones is actually pretty simple uh, after you make any change to the telephony service configurations, the ePhone configurations, or even the voice register global commands, you have to voice register global. You have to update the configuration file. And how to update the configuration file in the voice register global command uh, uh, configuration, you would say create and then it's profile. You hit enter, it'll update the all the new configuration files for your SIP phones, and then you just restart them and they'll get the new information. For telephony service, for SCCP, you're gonna say create CNF files, hit enter, and any changes will update the configuration files, restart the phones, and then they will be good to go. So, I've been speaking a lot, let's actually take a look at what I have so let me enable my webcam there we go and let's look at my setup here so I have my uh, 9971 phone right here it's uh pretty neat I like this I even have two of them just so I could do my little webcam services there is my CME router it's a 3825 this right here is my wireless LAN controller. There's my 7920, uh, no, 7970 phone. Looks like that. And then I have my wireless 7921 phone. And uh, there's the base station. And that right there is my access point, which my 7921 is connecting to. It's got a blue light, meaning that there is a client connected to it, so we should have connectivity together. Now, based on my configurations, we should be making, uh, we should be having some phone calls going on. So, let me call this number, 5001, and we'll start here, 5001, call. What? We can pick that up. Be like, hello? 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 Can you hear me? All right. So I'm speaking 
via this wireless IP phone connects to my wireless access point which is connecting to the switch which goes to my CME router which is connecting to my uh, 9971 so pretty cool setup uh, let me show you the video capabilities of my two 9971's uh, if I were to call the other line which I believe is 5002 call all right um, by default the way I have it set up once I answer it video is automatically going to be turned on uh, I'm sure you could turn that off if you want to um, plus these phones they actually have a camera shut off uh, a lens shutter or I could turn it off just in case uh, it is on by default and you don't want that you can turn it off or shut it off but I'll turn it back on and then you could also full screen these guys I could minimize them I could uh, hide the video so on and so forth okay um, so let me hang up and then I got my last phone over here this is my 7970 um, I mean I, I could call it, it wouldn't matter see so everything's working I'm not gonna pick that up but um, I just wanted to go through the configs with you guys and show you my lab setup so uh, I hope this was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing